So actually, this is some follow-up that uh, Shisei mentioned, that uh, the Mauchi example is a good, very good example, as Shisei mentioned, that uh, so it was very tough, and they spent very tough time, and why not they are uh, making a lot of profit. So possibly one explanation, not all explanation, but the one part of explanation is that the timing of investment. So compared with Thailand, Malaysia, or Singapore, history of Japanese investment here in India is, uh, I mean, not so long. So at the I mean, uh, early stage of investment, it's very difficult to get profit. So I'm a bit optimistic side. So if time passed, uh, Ideally, hope, <laughs> not expecting uh, any correction, but the hope that the more and more Japanese companies are making profit. And also, one more thing I want to add is uh, going back to the, the Mauchi uh, story. Uh, I mean, uh, timing for investment is always very difficult. <coughs> I mean, uh, we JBI shares government financial institution, we are uh, always advocating that uh, improving investment climate is important. I talked this with Mr. Kantosan, the APP, or any other government official in India. Maybe uh, that's true. However, if investment climate improved, more competition will happen. So more companies coming from European or China or Korea, and also more entrepreneurs started business here in uh, India too. In case of Maruchi, they started business nine, uh, I mean, uh, more than 30 years back. So infrastructure, I mean, worse than today, and the business environment worse than today. But they spent tough time, and now they are making a lot, a lot of profit, actually. So uh, improving uh, environment, investment employment, maybe this is good for, for the investor, but mostly this is good for the country itself. More investment is coming, they can uh, and, uh, and give more tax, and they are creating uh, that, uh, and, uh, and, uh, the job kind of things. So I think, uh, I always think there are two competition, competition for attracting company. So India, uh, Thailand, or China, they are competing for attracting uh, investment. But uh, Japanese company also needs to uh, compete with Chinese company or that Korean company or among Japanese company. So and this is just observation for up here. I want to just make a short comment about AIIB. <coughs> I'm from Asian Development Institute. And I think there are huge needs of infrastructure investment in this region. However, as I mentioned, indirect effects, spillover effects are very important. So how to bring private sectors together with infrastructure investments are very important. So lots of regulation has to be removed and foreign companies and domestic companies has to operate. Then both ADB and AIB will provide lots of financing to India. Well, uh, I think we are 10 minutes over time, uh, so we, uh, I also noticed that His Excellency Ambassador Takeshi Yagi is here for the final session, so I think with uh, uh, the permission of the panelists, uh, uh, I would uh, now conclude the session and request everybody to give a big hand to the four panelists. Thank you so much. we can get the final session on the road now. Uh, we've had an extraordinarily productive day over four sessions. It must have been tiring for all of you, the participants, uh, to be uh, around till now. But I think I have learned a lot. And uh, we, we will do a quick recap. Uh, Ambassador Yagi will give his uh, final remarks, and then uh, Rajat, and then I will uh, propose a vote of thanks and give you an idea or, or a preview of what you can expect the next time when we meet in a few months time. So with that, uh, Ambassador Yagi, floor is, your, is yours. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
Uh, thank you very much, Ambassador Sin and uh, uh, Dr. Katuria and uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It is a little bit uh, awkward, you know, to be uh, uh, at uh, the very end of the, of the session uh, and also at the beginning, but uh, uh, not to have heard any of the uh, discussions uh, in, in, in between. But uh, I've been informed by uh, my embassy uh, officials at least, you know, uh, of the main points that have been uh, raised here. Uh, I understand that uh, uh, the very uh, important issues uh, uh, related to our economic relations uh, uh, have been discussed, and uh, I uh, really would like to uh, extend my uh, sincere appreciation uh, to all the participants of the conference and, of course, the organizers uh, of uh, uh, ICRIE, and I have no doubt that uh, this conference has become an enlightening experience for all the uh, uh, participants. I'd like to uh, highlight perhaps you know, several developments uh, in the areas of uh, uh, today's uh, discussion in manufacturing infrastructure and connectivity, IT and finance and so on, just but uh, you know, uh, as some of the salient points. First about the uh, manufacturing and uh, attracting uh, foreign investment, particularly uh, Japanese uh, investment. Uh, quite uh, an interesting uh, recent development is that uh, uh, state governments uh, recently more and more uh, active in trying to uh, uh, attract foreign uh, investment. In the past uh, a few months, uh, Japan welcomed uh, visits by chief ministers from uh, Andhra Pradesh, Rajasthan, Maharashtra, and uh, uh, Madhya Pradesh. And several states have held big investment uh, promotion uh, events such as uh, Vibrant Gujarat and Tamil Nadu Global Investors Meet. You know, this is uh, something quite uh, interesting. You know, Tamil Nadu now hosting Global in Investors Summit. but. Uh, uh, then, you know, some other states uh, are going to follow suit. Rajasthan is going to uh, uh, hold uh, the resurgent uh, Rajasthan uh, event uh, starting tomorrow, and then West Bengal and Karnataka are going to host uh, similar events uh, in January and February, uh, respectively. And uh, recently, DIPP, uh, jointly with the World Bank and other institutions, published the assessment of uh, state implementation of uh, uh, business reforms with a ranking of uh, individual states in implementation of uh, investment uh, friendly uh, reforms. And the competition among states is uh, quite uh, uh, intriguing through their efforts to improve uh, business environment, including announcement of uh, incentive measures, uh, we strongly hope that uh, more states will become vibrant destinations of uh, investment, particularly of uh, uh, Japanese uh, investment. Uh, second, about the infrastructure. Railways Minister uh, Prabhu uh, <coughs> referred to uh, some of uh, the aspects of uh, uh, cooperation in the railway sector. And uh, I uh, don't want to uh, uh, fail to mention the Japanese uh, high-speed railway system, uh, Shinkansen, uh, you know, it really transformed uh, not only the public transportation uh, system in Japan, but also the economic and social life of the people. And uh, just as the Delhi Metro has uh, become a game changer uh, in the public transportation in India, I'm quite confident that uh, the high-speed railway, although it's, it sounds or it looks uh, huge, uh, it can do the same miracle uh, in India. Therefore, I really hope the Indian government will make uh, a final decision, of course a positive decision, uh, by the time of uh, our Prime Minister's uh, visit. And. Uh, uh, I, I would like to briefly touch upon the connectivity, which is of uh, strategic uh, import importance for, for us. Uh, as mentioned in the joint statement uh, uh, in September last year, uh, Japan and India will cooperate for enhanced connectivity uh, in Northeast India and linking the region uh, to uh, Southeast Asia. 
I understand uh, uh, the JICA representative has already uh, mentioned uh, the Northeast uh, uh, Road Project in Myanmar. When we talk about uh, you know, strategic connect connectivity, we uh, tend to uh, think about this Northeast uh, projects, but uh, perhaps you know, uh, strategically uh, those you know, sea road projects uh, can be even more uh, important. And uh, IT services, uh, I hear quite often uh, some, let's say, frustration uh, from uh, my Indian uh, colleagues and friends that uh, Japanese uh, companies uh, do not utilize you know, sufficiently uh, the Indian uh, IT uh, uh, services. But uh, uh, presently under the Japan-India ICT comprehensive uh, cooperation framework, uh, the joint working group uh, convened in December last year and uh, November this year uh, for the second time. And concretely, uh, five projects are uh, ongoing. I'm just going to name a couple of them. Uh, Green Mobile Base Station Project, Japan India Combat uh, Spam uh, Project. So uh, I, I really hope th those uh, you know, activities will strengthen and deepen uh, cooperation in the field of uh, uh, ICT. And also in the private sector, I uh, <coughs> attended uh, uh, some event uh, organized by a Japanese, uh, uh, big Japanese uh, telecom uh, service company uh, in Mumbai uh, recently. And uh, uh, the impression I got is that uh, Japanese IT companies are planning to start uh, supplying integrated uh, telecom telecommunication services in India, uh, which are essential for uh, business activities. And such services are made available uh, through combining uh, telecommunication network and uh, data centers. And I have a high expectation that uh, Japanese companies will play a leading role in the Indian market uh, in, in the coming uh, years. And finally, uh, about uh, uh, the financial uh, area. Uh, our cooperation in this area is expanding too. In November last year, uh, Ministry of, of Finance of uh, both countries and also uh, relevant authorities uh, held the first uh, financial cooperation uh, discussion, and we are planning to uh, have the next round of this uh, uh, financial dialogue uh, in, the, in the very near future. And activities of uh, finance, uh, financial institutions have also been enhanced. I know that uh, uh, the last session uh, was uh, uh, attended by uh, uh, several representatives of the financial sector, so uh, they might have uh, uh, already touched upon uh, this development, but uh, the three uh, mega banks of uh, Japan are expanding their networks uh, in India, and JBIC uh, also announced its uh, first rupee denominated loan uh, in August in response to the relaxation of uh, relevant uh, regulations. And furthermore, after the passage of the insurance laws, uh, Ins Insurance Laws Act uh, this year, one of the biggest uh, Japanese insurance companies. Uh, Tokyo Marines uh, decided to hike its stake in the Indian Life Insurance Joint Venture from 26 to the 49 percent uh, in, in, in August. So, in uh, various uh, you know, sectors, uh, our cooperation uh, has been ex expanding in concrete uh, forms, and of course, you know, uh, companies still face uh, a series of problems, but. Uh, uh, I think basically they are bullish, and as the ambassador, I have been always bullish, and I have to be uh, uh, bullish. And uh, uh, as you know, uh, Japan-India bilateral uh, relationship uh, is now elevated to the special uh, strategic and global partnership, and our robust and deepening uh, economic ties are the key driver of this uh, uh, special uh, relationship in the private sector. Uh, plays a critical role in this uh, entire uh, constellation. And we are determined to uh, take uh, these economic, economic ties for, forward and subsequently the whole uh, bilateral uh, relationship in cooperation with uh, the government of India, uh, state governments, and of course, uh, and, uh, and the uh, uh, 
uh, Indian uh, business and uh, I also uh, count on your continued uh, cooperation and uh, enlightening uh, and inspiring inputs. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador. I think you've summed up uh, what we had discussed during the course of the day extremely well. Uh, and also, you know, talked about what we could do in the future, what the two governments could do in the future. So what I'll do in, in my kind of summing up is also talk about something, what we can do as research institutions, because at the end of the day, our, as you all know, our uh, kind of strength lies in trying to collect information from all stakeholders, put it in a, in a framework, and then kind of encourage policy discourse, and then hopefully, eventually, try and get a policy change for greater uh, liberalization, reform, and therefore greater association between the two countries. Uh, so that is what we will do, and, uh, and Ambassador Singh will talk about our future plans with in, in, in